In this video, we're going to talk about uh, site analysis, what it is, and why we do it, so that you can do it for your assignment. Um, okay, so site analysis is exactly what it says. We analyze the site that the property is going to go on in order to help inform us make some decisions. Um, Edward White put together this fabulous PowerPoint um, that we're going to use. You guys have access to these PowerPoints and these lecture videos um, in Blackboard. So if you want to go through them more slowly at your own pace, they are connected in the in the reading folders uh, correlated per you know, what area we're talking about. Okay, um, so site analysis, in, in site analysis, we look at the site to determine how we should situate the residents on the property. And so there's a lot of things that we have to consider in context. And here, here are some of those. Um, location, contours, contours are how the, the site slopes. You're not gonna wanna put your house at the bottom of a hill because when it rains, all the rainwater is going to run into your house and flood your basement or ruin your foundations. Um, zoning, that is a, a code issue. We'll get more into that later. Noise, um, what, is there a road nearby? Does it create noise? We certainly want to know that because we're not going to want to put bedrooms towards the noise. We're going to try to do other buffers to help reduce the noise. What's traffic like? Where are the utilities? Because we, we don't, if we don't have them, we can have a say in where we place them. And if we do, we want to make sure that we are considering those in where we put the house. Um, like for instance, my house sits way back off the road. You can't see my house from the road. So um, when they built that, they had to run a lot of very long lines from the uh, water to the house. Um, and that's very expensive. So um, drainage, um, that kind of has to do with the contours, but it also does, you do think about how does the water flow on the site? Do we need to do any site work to compensate for that? What's the neighborhood like? What are the neighbors like? How close are the neighbor's properties to the property line? What are, where's the pedestrian traffic? Um, we wanna think about the property shape, the property size, what are setbacks? Setbacks and easements are um, where you cannot build and you need to know that. And those are things like right of ways for utilities or um, codes for certain locations will not want you to put two houses too close together in case one catches fire, you know, fire jumps from roof to roof. With certain easements and setbacks that can uh, prevent property from you know, catching the whole neighborhood on fire. Uh, a lot of other things, right? Are they gonna develop something um, down the road so that the county has created these uh, areas that they don't want you to build in? Things like that. Um, climate, what's the climate? Where's the sun? We wanna take that in consideration. You don't want the morning sun coming in through the bedroom windows and waking you up or blinding you. Um, what are the views? You know, what are the best views? If you have a nice view, you know, do you, you don't, maybe don't want to, or maybe you do want the living room to face that view. Um, what is the vegetation? You want to take trees and plants that are there into consideration. Are there any man-made man -made features that are existing, something like a well or a septic tank that you want to work around? And so you have to also think about, um, and this is also, some of this has to do with um, commercial, but you have to think about how will people come onto the site? Um, how will you maintain the site? Um, and how do these things have consequence on your, the location of where you place your building? And then there's something called hard data and something called soft data. Let's look at the hard data first. These are things that usually relate to the physical site that involve no judgment. The light, the site is where the site is. In the case of your project, it's at Wish, Whitmarsh Island. That's it. That's hard data, no judgment, right? Dimensions, those are given. You have those. 
Um, for this project, because y'all are new to this, we will have no contours. It'll be a flat site. You will almost never have that, um, but we will we'll deal with that later. What on-site features are there? Um, that includes your utilities. Is what's the climate? What's the zoning? What's the vegetation? All of that is just it is what it is, and you don't have to pass any judgment on it. Soft data actually are things that relate to the site that involve, um, whoops, excuse me, that involve value judgments that include sensory um, aspects. For instance, views. What are the best views? Some sites have no views. Some sites have views of your neighbor's bathroom window. Some sites have scenic views. So those are things that are judgment calls. And those are questions you want to run past your client. What, what do they consider to be um, acceptable views and not acceptable views? Views to the site, right? So um, when someone's in the street looking at your house, what do they see? Uh, best approaches to the site, that, you know, that's, that's a judgment call. Um, where are you gonna put your driveway? Are there the existence of odors? Um, and what is the human activity around the site? And we're gonna look at some of this. And then the type of neighborhood. Um, okay. So let's look at an example here. This is a, a site that is 220 feet by 250 feet. It has, um, I'm not sure whether these are supposed to be setbacks or easements, but it's got, the, you, you can't build within 10 feet right here of the street. Um, and then there's a road here. It's uh, 55,000 acres, or I'm sorry, 55,000 square feet, 1.6 acres. Here are the setbacks and the easements. There are no easements, but there, are, there is that setback. So you've got a 10 foot easement from the, proper, from the street to the property line, and then a 30 foot setback that you can't build in. And that's for a variety of reasons. This is all determined by code. And the way you find out what those codes are is you contact the county. Um, the county should have a website and they should give you um, that information. I know that my county has all that stuff online. It used to be a long time ago, you had to call them and get it, but now it should all be available online. You just need to know the county and contact the county. Trees, those are the trees that are there on that site. This site has contours. We will work with contours later. And you can see the what that has to how that impacts drainage, right? So the the there's a road here and it's all the way downhill, and so how are you going to deal with the fact that water is going to run off in the rain? You're not for this project, but that is a drain. It drainage is an issue. What man-made features are there? Where are the utilities? What is the vehicular circulation? What is the pedestrian circulation? And then the climate. What are the temperatures? How much rain does it get? How much humidity is there? Is there snowfall? Is wind an issue? Wind may not be an issue. I mean, we we're, we sometimes get some pretty heavy winds here. It can be an issue. Um, near water, is there a breeze? And this is um, just kind of showing how you can deal with wind by the planting trees as a buffer. And this just shows what the, the winter winds and the spring and the fall wind is on this particular site. Are there any special regional con conditions that you need to consider? Like, in this case, tornadoes. What about the sun? How much sun do you get? Where does the sun go? That, you know, is important if you guys are going to be considering solar. Um, sun angles. The sun is in a different place in the sky every minute of every day of the year and then it recycles. And so knowing that um, in the climate can help you make decisions about how much overhang do you want on your house? How, how, how much 
are you going to block the sun from coming in your windows? Because, you know, when the sun in the, in, in here and say at 12 o'clock in January one on that far right diagram on January 1st, when it's cold, you want the sun to come in and heat, heat things up. But on July 1st, you don't. So you want to make sure in this case that your overhangs are wide enough to block that summer sun from coming in those windows. And this gets into some really serious um, <clears throat> deep depth with the sun altitude and the azimuth and um, angles that the sun is going to be at. And, you know, basically if you draw your, your house height and your eave overhang height and width and depth um, with these angles you can tell whether or not it's going to block the sun where's the sun path where does the sun rise where does the sun set and it's going to be different in the at the winter solstice which is the first day of winter than the summer solstice which is the first day of summer which is the longest day of the year versus the shortest day of the year and this is just an example so in winter this the sun is going to rise on the lower arc. It's going to rise here and it's going to come around and then it's going to set, but it's going to obviously be at a uh, 36 degree angle. And so, you know, we want to consider that. How do we get the act? How do we make sure that, that if we want that winter warmth, how do we, how do we play into these numbers? And all this is also accessible and available online. Um, human cultural. What else is around? Um, what is the what is a crime rate? Um, what's going on in the area? What are the amenities? Just more information on that. What are the views from the site? Right? Do I want my there's a parking lot up here? Do I want my living room facing a parking lot? And then here are some drawings of what those elevations look like. And then what, you know, who's going to see into my property? What are they going to see? Uh, views through the site can include, you know, what's going to happen. Somebody standing there looking across. What are they going to see? What is the noise level? And then eventually we put all of this together on a site plan. So we, we research and we find out as much of this information that we can. And then we put it all together. And here it is in 3D. I love 3D models of site analysis. They um, really, and then this is where, this is the one after they put the building on it. They really do help you um, understand siting your house. So for this, this course, you're just going to start with the analysis. You're going to use that analysis after you've gotten your bubbles created and you're going to lay, or I've got you working on a grid, but if you can lay the, gr the grid and the bubbles on top of your site analysis, um, it will really help you lay out those rooms.